Pin me down. Tell me you don't like it. Because I've cooked so many drugs. <laughs> but it's totally a date. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Nikki Ashes. Welcome back to Let's Slay Monster Prom. We are on our second run through. We are romancing Liam and it's going much better this time. And I think that my sickening librarian meets maid cafe uniform outfit is bringing the heat, honestly. Wait, let me check really fast the stats that we need to have for Liam to like us. Because I don't waste time. I don't waste time. Regular, single player, 16-16. Oh my god, success. Okay. Let's just boost our creativity some more, sis, I don't know. That day while rehearsing for the speedrun strats. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. Uh-oh. Why? Afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing. Suddenly, everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you are arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain two creativity. Liam stalks past you backstage, pretending to talk to himself, but clearly speaking for your benefit. Oh, the tangled tribulations of the committed iconoclast. The talent show is a fascist monument to the misguided ego and public spectacle. Honestly, I don't know if it's because I have a headache right now, but like, sometimes when he talks, it confuses me. The dignified thing would be to sit out the event in protest. But that's what everyone expects me to do, therefore I must participate. The question is how? How do I foreground my native artistic talent while simultaneously making plain my utter contempt for the event. The imposter monologue to give you an opportunity to interject. Any ideas? 13 minutes of judgmental staring. A live mashup of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring and the theme song from the Ninja Turtles. This is basic. It's not very creative. He doesn't like that. But this one might, uh, this one might be stupid. We're doing so well on our stats, I feel like we could risk it. So creative. What a terrible idea. I love it. Oh, I mean, it's okay. Love is a plebeian emotion. Just like hate and fear and liking things. I only feel German emotions. Schadenfreude, Weltschmerz, Lebensschmude. Oh, I know what all those mean. <laughs> anyway, I have to go and download the Ninja Turtles theme song now. Obviously, I already have Stravinsky. And, uh, thanks, I guess. Blushing. You guess that's about as good as you're gonna get from Liam. You get two charm and one creativity. Obviously, we're gonna eat lunch with him and her. When you arrive at their table, you find that Polly and Liam aren't eating. They're just taking pictures of their food. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the Don't Need to Eat, so we just take the food big zone, baby. We believe that food like children should be seen and not tasted. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, have you ever tasted a baby? Have you? I don't know, maybe. My weekends are usually kind of a blur, like last Saturday. There'll be plenty of time to chronicle your sex exploits later, Polly. Right now, we need to focus on these food picks. While Liam and Polly were busy bantering, you were busily arranging a dope food pick of your own, and now to complete your masterpiece, a food pick, but instead of food, it's just a bottle of whiskey with ketchup on it. A food pick of Liam taking a food pick so meta. Whiskey is her, Liam is Liam. You level your phone at Liam just as he's about to snap a food pick, but his vampire reflexes are too good for you. Ah, pin me down, tell me you don't like it. Ha! Trying to out-meta the meta master, are you? We'll see about that. Liam levels his phone at Polly just as she's about to take a food pick. Now you're taking a food pick of a food pick of a food pick. Whoa, are we finding our phones at each other now? I want to play too! Suddenly Polly's got her phone pointed at you. It's like a food pick of a food pick. Okay, we've done it. We've created the meta triangle. The most meta shape in existence. This is our finest hour. The world around you dissolves into green columns of numbers and letters. You've done it. You can see the code. You are the one. The programming of the video game you are in awards you by raising your relationship points with the character known as Liam. Thanks, that was very meta. Oh, hey there, cutie pie. I found our pro let's chat lesson three. That day you spend some time in the library's PC sending malicious spam emails in the hope of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? Oh, this is me, I'm saying this. Look at me with my little white eyebrows. You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares, and you gain two money. Scott strolls by, happily munching something. Leaping, leaping, leaping. Liam gapes at him, appalled. What on earth are you eating, Scott? This delicious new flavor of Fangle's potato chips, maximum ultimate double barbecue massacre. Really? Because it looks like a raw severed goat head inside a cardboard tube. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess it does. Could have sworn it was potato chips. Still tasty, though. Tasty, tasty. Does wanton environmental destruction sound tasty to you? I don't know. Is that kind of jerky? No, Scott. Do you realize that in order to harvest these goat heads, Fangles and Co. decapitate millions of innocent goats every year? But what do they do with the bodies of the goats? <laughs> Nothing. It's a horrendously wasteful practice. Oh no, all those headless goat bodies running around and bumping into things, we have to stop them. Wait, really? I was just trying to make you feel guilty. I didn't actually have a plan of action, but if someone were to suggest one... 
Assemble an army of vengeful undead goat torsos. Write an extremely mean blog post. Okay, well, Liam has done this in the past, so maybe we should just do this. Fingers crossed. Oh, he likes it. Fuck. Quiet, Scott. I've been training my entire life for this. Liam looks at our tablet with This Machine Kills Fascists written on it and gets to work. The blog post he writes is so incendiary, the Monstropolis Fire Department has to send digital firefighters to put out all the flame emojis. Oh, <laughs> whoa! This game is fun. Bengals is forced to recall their Maximum Ultimate Double Barbecue Massacre flavor just to prevent the internet from burning down. Scott bids a tearful goodbye to his cardboard tube full of goat head and he agrees for the best. You get more smarts and more creativity. Oh my god, sis. Week 5 morning. Do I need... Am I gonna need more money for something? Should I continue going to the library? Okay, library PCs, online poker. Yes, yes, yes. Two money. You notice Liam sitting at computer sighing deeply and looking even more aggravated than usual. Babe, oh my babe. Oh, hello there. Have you heard the news? One of my favorite books, The Damned to Damnation Volume 2, Damnation Time, is getting a movie adaptation. Thousands of people will experience this wonderful story. The author will see wide recognition and make lots of money. New fans will fall in love with the characters. It's awful! And as if that weren't bad enough, the lead vampire is going to be played by a werewolf. Why would you cast a werewolf to play a vampire? I refuse to watch some hairy abomination in fake fangs and pale face paint play a role that should have been rightfully gone to a vampire performer. I'm going to put an end to this wolf washing here and now, but how shall I do it? Crash the set and star in the movie yourself. Start a rumor that the casting director eats live babies. God, I don't know. What's creative and smart? I don't know. Not so charming. Oh no, I'll spread misinformation about that. But he likes it though. Liam hurriedly types up a post about the horrible practices of the casting director in regards to his live baby eating. The internet works quickly and ruthlessly like a drunken game of telephone where nobody actually speaks the same first language. When you realize the rumor has evolved into something entirely different. What just happened? They've turned my rumor into something about global warming being fake? Yep, it seems like a good chunk of internet users are quite proficient at making everything about global warming being fake. Stupid internet. Let's go again. Liam writes another article, this time it says the casting director sexually abused his own desk. He posts it and quickly spreads and evolves until what? They've made it about climate change not being real again? It's unbelievable. Who's in charge of deciding who has access to the internet? Okay, third time's the charm. No, but isn't. Liam's new article ends up being ammunition for people who argue that global warming is an invention by the Democrats. But to be fair, this time the article is about the casting director being the reason global warming is happening, so maybe this one was on Liam. Still. I can't believe this internet! I will file a formal complaint. Who owns the internet? Probably the Illuminati or Miranda's family. No, better yet, I'll leave a bad review on Yelp about the internet. And you, thanks for nothing. Don't be surprised if you find out I wrote a bad Yelp review on you, too. You start to think Liam is not entirely aware of how Yelp or the internet work, but you lost some creativity and fun. Evening class, we're gonna go get our creativity back. You find Damien brandishing silverware, a hammer, and chisel. Liam looks on in horror. Watch me. First of all, it's made of a seamless... Oh my god, I remember this. Oh, Liam's right, Damien. You should make him eat it. Oh, I see the error of my ways. I clearly misread this the first time. We're gonna just write this. Baby... Oh, he loves it. Baby seals, give him to me! I can already taste the cruelty! Nick, you scoundrel. How could you substitute wanton irresponsibility for animal cruelty? You quietly explain to Liam that the baby seals you're feeding to Damien aren't really baby seals. Hey, these are just seal-safe, beanie baby stuff with tofu and pig's blood! Good thing you always keep a sack of baby seal decoys in case of a killer whale attack. I applaud your craftiness and high regard for animal life. Let's go to return the phylactery to Larry's crypt together. It ends up being the third most romantic night you've ever spent in a crypt. Score! Only four more units of time are left. I want to get my creativity back. Where did that happen? At the auditorium. Okay. We are st struck by the lightning of inspiration. We come up with the ultimate name for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves in the world. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Quite the feat, you gain two creativity. You casually reading the latest issue of Monster Magazine when you are rudely interrupted. Oh, he's cute as a tree. See, even Nick, a sensible monster with a good head on his shoulders and at least some plus smarts, is reading Monster Magazine. Yeah, and that's bad, because we're warriors, so we need to fight. Scott takes the magazine from you and punches it. Hooray, let's go solve another of the world's major problems. No, Scott, we're social justice warriors, you've seen Nick. Ever since our major success with the Fangle's goat head debacle, we've taken it upon ourselves to stand up against injustice. By punching magazines. No, Scott. As you no doubt notice, Monster Magazine's sexiest monster alive this year is Count Victor von Musselbod, the werewolf prince slash bodybuilder. That makes him the fifth royal werewolf bodybuilder in a row to earn the title. 
What about those of us with leaner physiques? What of our representation? So now we're endeavoring to get into Monster Magazine to name someone from a more marginalized community as their sexually creature alive. We just need a way to convince them since punching the magazine wasn't good enough. Psh, that's easy. All you need to do to solve everyone's body images issues is forever is make our own version of the magazine featuring a three-winged chupacabra on the cover, lean heavily into the warrior part, storm Monster Magazine, and hold the editor-in-chief captive until he promises to exclusively promote one aesthetic as the pinnacle of monster sexiness. No, 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 no. This, right? So creative. Uh, what a brilliant idea. Three and two are definitely an under, underserved population. I've played sports game against someone exactly like that, and he's always wanted to be a model, but never thought anyone would want to do pictures of him, and now we can. You can and you do, and all the pictures you make and a mock-up of your monster magazine, and it goes hella viral, and before long it's becoming more celebrated than the actual monster magazine. Pretty soon after, you get a letter from the editor-in-chief officially admitting defeat in the face of your superiority and relinquishing his magazine and headquarters to you. Sweet, now you have a magazine, which instantly brings you three money! Oh, hey, queens. Hey, ladies. Hey, I know you are about to move on to your next misadventure, but what I just wanted to say really quickly is pretty much the only girls in the school shaped differently than the rest of our classmates. It was really nice to see three weeks of Chupacabra celebrated over a royal werewolf bodybuilder builder exists hope to, you know. Oh, that was really sweet. The coven is so much cooler when they're... Not babbling on and on about end-of-the-world bullshit and expecting your help with it. It's way more fun to interact with your classmates when they're complimenting you instead. Alright, last day. This is going really well, I think. Oh my god, is there any wood that I can knock on? Oh my god, I'm dying. Our smarts and creativity are great. Should we try to get some fun? For the sake of fun? Let's just get smarts. Does that happen in class? In our class, we're having a hard time looking at the unspeakable Eldritch Relic you're supposed to be painting when Liam and Miranda thankfully provide you with a distraction. What are you talking about, Miranda? That relic clearly represents the futility of man's quest for meaning in a world of consumer goods. But how do you know that, Liam? To me, it just looks like a gruesome and horrific offering to a pitiless god, like Uncle Anathema used to make. Why, it's easy, Miranda. When I want to discern the true meaning of a piece of art, I simply... I simply... Uh, oh, he's so flustered. Make it up, look at the bottom, and read the clearly printed label that explains the true meaning of the art. Oh, no. What is... Make it up. Not so fun. Oh, I'm not fun. It's fine. I don't make anything up, you buffoon. My opinions on art are objectively correct. Ugh, that's true. Yes, I agree with Liam. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about after all. Perhaps, are you jealous of Liam's ability to objectively understand art? I'm used to it. The social isolation I experience is entirely to do with jealousy and nothing at all to do with me being an asshole. Can you teach me to objectively understand the meaning of art? No. Curse you, cruel fate! Liam and Miranda ignore you, and after that, you're forced to return your attention to the malevolent statue. It slowly drives you mad, and you lose smarts and creativity. It's fine, I have a surplus of each. All right, our last lunch. You know, the food in this cafeteria really is atrocious. It's hardly even worthy of my Instagram. <laughs> what? I don't even eat the food. See, this is exactly what I mean. We can do so much better than these subpar culinary abortions. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. You mean the two of us should have a cook-off. What? No! Did you say something? I'm not listening because I'm so psyched about this cook-off! She's fun. We like- Oh, sorry, camera. She's fun. I like this. At no point did I agree to- I've got a huge advantage, though! Because I've cooked so many drugs! Oh, uh, you think you've got the advantage, huh? I've been alive for centuries of culinary history. It's on! The two of them dash into the kitchen, ignoring all rules of law, school, and common decency as they commence cooking. Two celebrity chef judges appear to critique the challengers. I think they're both equally horrible, says the cruel British judge. I think they're both equally marvelous, says the overly nice British judge. Both judges turn to you. What do you think, tiebreaker judge? Whose meal is truly the cat's pajamas? Liam's because I think that the glass jar's blood really goes with the parsley he sprinkled on the top. Polly's because she literally just made a pair of pajamas for a cat. I don't know. This seems like an obvious choice. Ha! In your face, Wolfgang suck! That'd be a better name for Scott! I'm not even a wolf! As a matter of fact, that would be a better name for you! Oh, uh, what, because I'm a vampire? Wow, that would totally make sense. No, I just meant because you suck. Well, this sucker just grabbed the judges with my blood tartare. It's raw, organic, free-range blood, unethically sourced from a local terrified human. And that parsley, farm to table! Or rather, farm to blood, I threw it in the blood. I like the color. Actually, it's well known that nobody knows what parsley tastes like. <laughs> and you probably never will, because you're certainly not drinking any of that concoction. You tell Liam his prize for winning the cook-off is eating lunch alone with you. Slurp, slurp. All right. This is our last unit of time. Do I need any of these things? Should we try to have fun? 
Let's try to have fun. That day during recess, we start a half-hour rave. 300 people, summon demons, rad party, a little bit of fun. Lately, you've been being cute with Liam, but in an ironic sense. And he seems to tolerate you, which is like third base for Liam. So tonight, you're having a picnic at the graveyard. It's like a date, except it totally isn't a date because dates are like super cliche. Oh my god. But it's totally a date. Ah! It's time. You're going to kiss him. You've practiced a lot with your pillow, which might or might not be a body pillow customized with a real-sized full-body picture of Liam. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Here you go. You know what, Nick? I've been thinking about the concept of kissing. And not because being with you makes me think about kissing. But don't you think kissing is such an outdated and vulgar concept? Your best way of showing your feelings is by putting your mouth over another person's mouth? But you wanted to put your mouth over his mouth, goddammit. Come on, Nick. Promise just around the corner. Quickly, think of a never-before-seen way of showing your feelings to Liam. Don't show your feelings. Sing your feelings. Being figurative is for cowards. Real winners are always literal. Show Liam your feelings. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. I don't want to sing. Can I save state? I'm nervous. Being figurative is for cowards. Being figurative is something that Liam likes, though, right? Real winners are always literal. Show Liam your feelings. You know what? Nikki Ash is going to have to tie-break this one. Nikki Ash just is not saying... Not so bold. You start a magic ritual to give your feelings a physical form. Yes, there's a magic ritual for that. Magic is just stupid. Your feelings are many and complex, and when putting all of them together in a physical form, it turns out that they add up to the shape of a feral puma. What are you doing? First you spend an hour of our picnic ignoring me so you can scribble somewhere. Oh, I'm fucking it up. Oh yeah, that ritual took you an hour so you couldn't focus on Liam. And then you summon a friggin' puma in the middle of it, which is like the fifth, the last thing I can like in a picnic. Just between two pumas and gluten. No, he leaves. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Alright, here we go. Good luck, me. Yes, please. <laughs> Finally, pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom. Prom? It's not that I love the concept of prom, but we need to be there, if only to remind everyone that we're cooler than them. It's almost a duty, so we should do it, huh? Prom night was dreamy. Oh my god, look at us! He looks so handsome! I look pretty good too. I just still don't know what that little ghost tail thing is on my shoulder. You and Liam criticized the vulgar mu musical choices of the band the entire night. And at one point you crashed the gig by joining them with a xylophone and a theremin. Our renowned music blogger happened to be there because for some reason she thinks the next big thing will be found at a high school prom or whatever. She said, I understood virtually nothing, which probably means it was avant-garde and too much of an intellectual delicacy even for me. I give it zero thumbs up, but only because ranking art numerically is a travesty. Keep an eye on Liam de Lioncourt and Nick crashing future prom nights. They will wow you. You both kept a copy of the review as memory of such a wonderful night together. Nick, most likely to become a lasagna. Liam's quote, old pond, frog jumps in, the sound of water. What? All right, everybody. Well, that was a successful run of Monster Prom. We got to date Liam. I don't know if that's if there's better endings than that. It was great, though. We didn't kiss him, though. I got farther with Craig and Robert. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Smash my buttons. I hope that you love my hair because it's new and not glued down. <laughs> and I hope that you have a fabulous day.